Okay. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. I am going to be speaking with Chelsea Newman on CBD oil and why, um, why it works in your body, how it works in your body, why quality is super important, the things that you need to know and be aware of when selecting a CBD, and making sure you have good resources. So welcome, Chelsea. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you. No, it's really hot over there. I'm on the East Coast and it's cold. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, I've been involved with CBD now for um, about four years inside the industry, even from growing. And I have a full nutrition background and, you know, it's one of the hottest topics. Christina and I have been talking back and forth about it because it really is something that everyone is jumping on the bandwagon and taking. I see it absolutely everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm actually quite, quite concerned for a lot of people because it's, it can be a very dangerous product if you haven't had it tested correctly. I was just at a place earlier today and they had a thousand milligram product for $60. And I was like, well, that doesn't make sense. Wow. So I looked at the back and it just said hemp oil extract. So it means that there's actually no CBD present. Um, so today we're just kind of going to educate on the plant and like the process, what you guys should be looking for, if you should be taking, why you should be taking it. It's a product that I'm really passionate about. I've been in the nutrition industry for about 10 years now, and there's only a few things that I really recommend that everyone takes. And this is something that I recommend everyone try. Um, so yeah, we'll go through a lot of those different things. And I'll yeah, just, I'm excited. Thank you. Yeah, I'll share my presentation with you guys too. So I got involved in this industry about four years ago. I was working with a client of mine. His name, I'll call him Frank, but um, he called me and he was having, is experiencing neuropathy. And he told me that his neuropathy was going away from using cannabis products. And he was diabetic. And I thought, you know, that's really, I'd, I kind of pushed it aside, to be honest, but I started doing my research because I'm intrigued by those kinds of things. And I stumbled upon a, putty, a study that said that cannabis users are 66% less likely to develop diabetes, which was really fascinating to me because usually when you're smoking weed, you're like having the munchies and right. that is not what I expected. So that's what took me down this whole entire spiral studying this molecule of CBD or cannabidiol. And cannabidiol is something that's very present. It's present in our bodies. We produce it naturally. It's present in a lot of other plants as well, like echinacea, hops, um, black pepper, these things. But in hemp, it's the most present. So I always start this presentation off with every plant is a teacher, but as in every crowd, there are a few loud mouths. You know, plant medicine can teach us a lot. And hemp is definitely one that needs to come back to our medicine cabinets. And I'll teach you guys a little bit about the history as we go through it. Um, so we're just going to go over kind of what the cannabis industry is, the history and the future of the hemp, how to be healthy without the high, the potential medical implications that CBD has, what your endocannabinoid system is, uh, how to navigate the market, and how you can actually become involved in the prohibition of cannabis if you decide that it's right for you after you hear this. I personally never thought I would have what we say as a cannabis company now. Uh, my grandma was like really horrified when I told her that. But I remember reporting my dad to the DARE officer in sixth grade for smoking marijuana. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so I didn't think I would be going down this road, but it's something that I've become really passionate about. And when I say cannabis, cannabis is the family of the plant. And within cannabis, you have hemp and you have marijuana. So it's kind of like the citrus family where you would have lemons and oranges. So I'm going to use the word cannabis, but it's not necessarily only referring to marijuana. And I'll explain that. This is a commercial that was banned from being played at the NFL. And we actually do, so I am brand specific and I will talk about why. Um, the line that I use is used by the NFL and it's approved by the Anti-Doping Federation. But this was a really interesting commercial. It was put out, it was banned from publicity. And I like to share it because it really shows the impact that this product can have. Austin would have dozens to hundreds of seizures every single day. None of the prescriptions would work. One pill almost killed our son. I've had three back surgeries and I was on opioids for 15 years. It was a very dark, very depressive time in my life. After my injury, I felt like I couldn't live with the pain, but I couldn't live with this treatment long term. It was unbearable. I don't want to live like that anymore. Medical cannabis saved Austin's life. Cannabis has given me my life back. There are families in other states having to watch their children die. 
want to see my brothers and sisters who sacrificed so much for this country have access to the safest treatment possible. This really is an injustice. It's not just unfair, it's cruel. So you and I, Christina, will know, like, that commercial really moved me, but I found it just so ironic that it's a plant that has never killed anyone. Um, there's not really any negative side effects that come along with it, and it was not allowed to be played on TV, but we have these commercials for things like Humira that cause lymphoma right. and death and all of these crazy diseases. So it's a really interesting... It's kind of shocking, right, just how much the pharmaceutical industry owns this country, mm -hmm. because... Um, why would we not want to allow people to get healthy by using natural plants? But we're, it's not just hemp that we're trying to ban. We're trying to ban all kinds of, um, I don't even think it's legal to be an herbalist, right? Um, it's just crazy. Yeah. I have this quote in here. It says, it was a very strange thing that we made nature illegal. And it just, it blows my mind that this plant has been removed and pretty much all plants have been removed from a lot of our medicine cabinets. Um, drug companies will take them, they will make a synthetic from it. Like, you know, aspirin is made from white willow and these things and they cause terrible side effects. So there is currently one synthetic CBD that has been created. It's called Epidiolex. It was approved for children, um, <laughs> getting the dog. It was approved for children with epilepsy and it has killed one little girl already. And there's never been a side effect like that from a CBD molecule. So it was very interesting. But hemp and CBD, it's taken off and people think it's this new thing, but it's actually not. It's like the oldest medicine that we've had it's been found in the tombs. Cleopatra used to use it for beauty regimens. It was actually the most widely prescribed medication up until 1937. So when I was talking with my grandmother around this, she remembers using hemp products for period cramps when she was a young girl. And I remember being in high school in the East Coast and having my friend be prescribed Oxycontin for period cramps. So it's really, you know, it's actually a really scary state. And there's a lot of conspiracy that surrounds this, but I will just say, you know, the definitely probably is some of that, but this is very much in your face. So in the Congressional Library, you can go and look this up. The American Medical Association wrote that the Tax Act, the Marijuana Tax Act of 1937, was passed in direct response to the introduction of mo morphine and opioids. So before we had morphine and opioids, we were using hemp and cannabis-based products for pain, for addiction, and for things like that. Um, and then when those got introduced, the Marijuana Tax Act came along and we were no longer able to use hemp products. Up until 1937, farmers were required to grow hemp. And it was the base of all of our medicines in the pharmacopoeia. So it's only within the past 73 years or so that we've not actually been having these products in our diet and in our medicines. And there's a couple other major industries that really don't like hemp around. So hemp can actually replace all plastics. It can be used as a food. It can be used to feed livestock. It can be used for fuel. It can be used to make building material. It doesn't burn. It's antimicrobial. It's the only renewable plant on earth able to replace all fossil fuels and it grows within 90 days. So paper products, for example, usually takes about 10 years for a tree to grow. For hemp, it only takes 90 days for it to come to maturation, um, and the Declaration of Independence is actually written on uh, hemp paper. So this is a picture of a car. Henry Ford actually created this car right around when the Marijuana Tax Act came into play. So he was fueling this car with hemp and he'd created the car out of it. And then this is a new one that Porsche has just rolled out. They've created the doors and the body out of hemp. It's extremely safe and it's called the Hippie actually. So there's a lot of things beyond CBD that we can do with this product. Wow. So what really is the difference? Uh, a lot of people think they want their CBD to come from marijuana, and that's not true. So hemp is actually higher in CBD content, and it's where the magic happens. Marijuana has CBD, and there are some medical benefits to marijuana, absolutely. But I'll say it like this. When people say marijuana is not what it used to be, it's totally true. So in its natural state, marijuana had more CBD than THC. And CBD is the molecule that doesn't get you high. It actually blocks THC receptors. So it creates some more of like a mellow high. And so what happened when marijuana was made illegal, people would breed these strains that had higher THC content to get you more stoned. And I describe it more like when we stopped 
out when we made alcohol illegal, no one was making fine wine. They were all making moonshine. And that's exactly what happened to marijuana. So in its natural state, it is higher in CBD. Um, but you do want your CBD to come from hemp. So hemp is visually going to look different. It's about 10 to 20 feet high versus marijuana that's going to be about waist high. And it's used all around the world. Um, and you'll usually see it as a cannabis sativa. So you can have an indica or a sativa. Indica is going to be in the marijuana family. You can remember this because indica is like in the couch because you get all mellowed out. Um, and sativa will like pick you back up and it will help with moods and things. So the difference between THC and CBD is CBD is non-psychoactive. It cannot get you high. You could try as much as you wanted. You'll never get high off of CBD. There's minimal drug interactions. And it has, this is important, it has a low affinity for CB1 and CB2 receptors. So THC is what's called a partial antagonist for CB1 and CB2 receptors. What that means is that CBD is safe for children um, and THC is not necessarily safe for children. So that's something very important to distinguish with. And hemp oil versus CBD. So that oil I saw today that was charging very little money, $60, but it's still a ripoff because it's technically just hemp oil. And hemp oil is really good for you. It makes an amazing salad dressing. It's really high in omega-3s and 6s, but it doesn't necessarily mean that there's CBD in it. So you have to breed a strain of the plant to have a high CBD content. And I describe it like if you were growing oranges, you could grow oranges that had very little vitamin C. It'll still be an orange and it'll still make orange juice, but it doesn't necessarily have a lot of vitamin C. So you need to make sure that when you're looking for a product, it doesn't just say hemp oil and that they've actually tested after the product has been made to see that it's a high CBD strain. And isn't this kind of part of the problem that's going on out there with the all the different CBDs like you go into a, um, a distributor what is it a um, you know, dispensary shop, shops you can just walk into yeah hemp, you can buy the health food source you can buy it at the gas station now. <laughs> yeah so you know a lot of the times those aren't tested you don't know what you're getting and you could be buying a bottle of hemp oil yeah. which would be great to take home and cook your food in. <laughs> really good. Well, not cook too much because it's a low smoke point, but it's okay. like, it's delicious. It's good for your skin, but it doesn't mean that you've bred a high strain CBD into it. And it's a science. It's like, I used to grow. I know, I know a lot about this and it's, you have to have certain seeds, you have to have certain growing conditions. And if you put a seed in the soil that you think is going to grow high CBD, there's many things that can go on throughout the breeding process or the growing process, like different rain, different acids in the soil that can make it have a low CBD content. And this is why it's important to test your product afterwards. So as much as I love small farmers, and I would love to rely on small farmers for this, you can't really, when you're looking at it as a prescription grade product and you're saying 50 milligrams works for me, you cannot rely that the farmer who grew your last strain is going to be able to produce that. You need to test it afterwards to make sure that it's the same. Um, the reason this was kind of discovered, and it's in a great documentary called Weed the People, there was this young girl, I believe she was around six or seven, could be wrong about that, um, but her father took her to a dispensary to get CBD oil for her chemotherapy side effects, and she was suffering with leukemia. And he just thought it was going to help with the side effects. But what ended up happening was in two weeks, all of her tumors went away. And so they went back to the dispensary to get the same CBD and it wasn't around. So they bought a different one. And in two weeks, her, all of her tumors came back. So oh, they wow. started to realize that, you know, the different strains matter and the breeding matters. So that's why it's being studied a lot more. And there are a lot of cannabinoids. So we hear of just CBD, but there's also CBN, CBG, CB8. And this is why you really want a full spectrum product. So there's at least 100 known right now, and I'm sure we will discover more. But when you're looking at cannabinoids from a hemp plant, what makes them extra special is the chlorophyll, the terpenoids, the flavonoids. These all really bump them up. Um, so they're also, you know, they're found in echinacea, flax, and tea and kava and hops, but they don't have this entourage effect of all of the cannabinoids. That's what makes hemp very unique for producing cannabinoids. There's a lot of companies that have rolled out products like uh, doTERRA has rolled out one called Copaiba. And it's a great product, but it only acts on one of the CBD receptors and it's only one type of CBD. It's not got the full spectrum. So that's where people are getting a little confused with that. And this is kind of, you know, this is what it's going to look like. So when you're breaking down the molecule, you've got CBG, CBC, um, and then 
if you were to have a marijuana plant, this big CBD plant part or this big blue part would be THC and this small green part would be CBD. So that's why you want a hemp plant. So with hemp, you've got this big part is CBD and this little part is THC. And, you know, there are some benefits to THC and it is good to have a full spectrum product if you, if you can handle it, if you don't get drug tested. You'll never get high if the product's not been heated. Um, it's impossible to get high anyway. You could eat all the weed that you wanted to, but if it's never been heated, it won't do anything. So THC bumps up. It's what calls, causes what we call the entourage effect. Mm-hmm. So um, some of our products, they're full spectrum and they have 0.3% or less of THC. So they're federally legal. You could potentially fail a drug test, but I explain it like eating a poppy seed bagel. That's really how much THC you're kind of getting. Um, So if you don't get drug tested and you have the option to take full spectrum, you should. If that's a concern for you though, we do have a line that's approved by the Anti-Doping Federation that removes that THC. And some people do think they are sensitive to it. I'm personally quite sensitive to THC. I'm okay with our full spectrum products. Um, but it's, it's up to somebody's personal discretion. And if you have a child that you'd like to put on it, you can get products where this THC is completely removed. Good to know. Yeah. So CBD, I think has gotten the reputation of snake oil of that. It'll do, it'll work for everyone. And people are using it from, you know, Parkinson's to depression, to performance, Um, And this is kind of the reason why. So CBD is what's considered an adaptogen. So what it does for you or what it does for me is going to be very different. So this is a quote by Dr. Raphael Mishulam, and he says, I can't list all of the physiological symptoms or systems and conditions affected by cannabinoids because there are too many. So CBD is what's balancing what we call the endogenous cannabinoid system. And this was a system that was discovered in 1990. It's found in everyone's body. It's actually actually the body's largest self-regulatory system. And it's only taught currently in 13 pharmacies, schools, or 13% of pharmacy, nursing, and medical schools. So it's definitely understudied and underknown. It was discovered by a man who was researching the runner's high. So that's why this product is very not ailment specific. It's really balancing this system in your body. So it's balancing your hormones, it's balancing your sleep, it's balancing your appetite. And depending on what you need, It might make some people more hungry if they're underweight. It might make some people less hungry if they're overweight. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I, you know, it's, I've heard it used in so many different ways and, you know, kind of touching back on the THC, I watched a a thing on Green Flower, which is a really great educational website on, on cannabis. So it talks about both CBD and THC products and how having um, some THC in the product when you have breast cancer is really important because it is that adaptogen and it helps your, it's, you know, it's been shown to help, you know, increase your estrogen when, when it's low and decrease it when it's high, which I think is really fascinating and something that is kind of widely needed um, Mm -hmm. just from my health coaching experience that we all sort of have this estrogen dominance, men and women happening. Men especially. And yeah, it's just nudging the body back and certain diseases respond to THC. Like MS, for example, really doesn't, it doesn't not do well with CBD, but it doesn't have very significant results until you put the THC in there. And people will understand medical cannabis when you're talking about THC, although yeah, it can create a psychoactive effect. If you're sick, people who are sick do not really receive the psychoactive effect. So when you're dealing with medical cannabis, really the job is to figure out a product that does not cause any kind of um, psychoactive effect. So and certain diseases- the Pharmaceuticals that we give people in yeah. the middle of this are so much more toxic, so much more damaging, so much, they're addictive. And they're certainly getting, they're certainly numbing people out yeah. in a much more significant way than what Um, a product that has a small amount of THC is going to do. Yeah. I mean, look at opioids, for example, THC is one, I mean, sorry, CBD and THC are one of the only things that are safe to add to an opioid regimen. And it's you, if you watch the documentary, weed the people, this young boy was able to get off his, um, or his addiction to morphine within 24 hours. He was addicted to morphine because of his chemo treatment. He was in so much pain. 
but it's really, we don't have another product on the market that's safe to add. Usually if you're weaning someone off of an opioid, it's something like Suboxone. It's very dangerous. Right. Um, what do you give people? A methadone? Methadone, Suboxone. These products are just as bad as these. Yeah. If you can die from not taking it, that's a huge problem. And right. so CBD is something that you can add in safely to these regimens. And yeah, if you do create some kind of a psych, um, psychoactive effect with the THC. None of our products are going to do that, but you like exactly like what you said, there's very little harm in that compared to a lot of the other products. I mean, if you look at the drug commercials, it's like could cause psychosis, suicidal thoughts, like that's yeah, not going to cause happen. cancer. I mean, mm -hmm. all the time when I see them and, and I don't watch TV really anymore, but when I see, you know, if I sit at someone else's house and I see like an hour of TV, like more than half of the time is cut to pharmaceutical commercials. And all I can think is like, wow, we're really pushing pharmaceuticals one and two, like, wow, the side effects that they just rattled off sound worse than what they're supposed to be helping. Yeah. I, I, just, I, think I just go with my disease. <laughs> yeah. I just saw a commercial for Humira. I don't really watch TV either, but I do talk about Humira sometimes when I present about CBD because to be on our gold applicator product, which is the highest milligram that we have, and this is the one that I put on, you know, like cancer patients, people who are going through something extreme. So this might sound daunting, but it's about $4,000 a year to be on that product. Wow. But Humira is a product for rheumatoid arthritis that I just had a lady yesterday pull me aside and say, I have come off all of my medications except one for my rheumatoid arthritis using CBD. And she was on Humira and Humira is $4,100 a month to be on. So it's like very relative, you know, and that's why these drug companies can afford to put out commercials for things like that. And it blows my mind that we're the only country in the world that allows that. No other country allows you to put out a drug commercial. And who watches that and goes to their doctor and says, hey, I want to take this drug? Like, that's a very bizarre thing anyway. Yeah. And that's what they've been grooming over the last um, 10 years. And um, it is what you see. I mean, the, it is what's happening is people are coming into their doctors and be like, I heard that this works. Yeah. Uh, and the doctors that I work with with CBD now, so everyone's going to their doctors and they're saying, I want CBD. And the doctors are really at a place where they're saying, I would like you to take it. I just want you to take a safe product because they understand how messy the industry is. And I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, we do work with the one that's currently the only pharmaceutical grade CBD in the world. In 11 countries, it's written as a prescription and reimbursed by insurance. And it's on the physician's desk reference as well. So not all CBD is created equal. I will tell you that. I used to grow. I thought I was going to be a millionaire and started my own farm and <laughs> lived in a trailer in Vermont growing this stuff. But there was mold in the whole crop and it ended up going to market. Because in the United States, you were using hemp brokerages at this time. So anyone can grow and anyone can submit their flower to a company that has a brand and they will press it and they will shuck it and they will take the oil out. But they don't know if there's any heavy metals, molds, toxins attached to that product. They don't know what they grew it with. And hemp is a phenomenal um, soil cleaner. So it's what's called a bioaccumulator. Sunflower and hemp are the two plants that do this, where you plant them to clean the soil. Their root system is really interesting. So they'll suck all the heavy metals into it, which makes it phenomenal if you want to clean your soil, makes it incredibly dangerous if you want to put it in your body. Right. And that's why we grow in Europe right now, and everyone's like, ooh, American-grown hemp. And to me, I hear American-grown hemp, and I'm like, avoid it. Because in America, we have the worst standards for testing. We have some of the worst soil in the world. England and Europe have never allowed genetically modified crops over there. Right now, they've banned 1,132 1, products in skincare in Europe. We've only ever banned 11 in America. So I just say avoid American growth anything at this point, unfortunately. <laughs> so sad. Mm -hmm. It is. But this is, you know, CBG is really hitting the major thing that we're all dealing with, and it's inflammation. So that's why I encourage everybody to try this for a course of time, because we're all inflamed. Um, one of the other things that it works on is it's an antioxidant and a neuroprotection. The government actually holds a patent to say that. But it works on EMFs as well. So it's helping with electrical communication in the body. And we're all so exposed to Wi-Fi and things like that now. Fascinating. Yeah, it's been really fascinating. Dr. Titus, who is the CEO of this company, 
talks a lot about electrical nutrition and what CBD is allowing your body to do electrically speaking. And our products, if you actually test the electricity in them are higher than other products as well. So you're not getting like a dead product, if you will. But the National Institute of Health has come out and said that CBD may have therapeutic potential in almost all conditions affecting humans. And the way that the reason that they can say this is because it's working on the inflammation pathways. And if we can turn off inflammation, we can fix a lot of different things. So that's why I highly recommend everyone to do a course of this. What I usually work with with people is what's called a loading phase. So I say make a 90 day commitment to your CBD and you want to take 50 milligrams a day at least to start. And then you can titrate down to a very low dose. I call it like filling up your buckets. And once those buckets are full, it's kind of like with magnesium. You use it all the time when you're stressed, but if you fill that bucket up, that bucket doesn't get empty when you're using it. So we start high. We say make a 90 day commitment. If you have anything like cancer going on, you can start much higher up to 120 milligrams a day, sometimes even above. There's nothing that goes bad with taking too much CBD except a little bit of a cost um, issue. It may be that 60 milligrams was working for you, but you're taking 120. If you're going through something serious, I can look at that like your insurance policy for a little bit of time. But um, for the normal person, 50 milligrams a day to start and then bumping your way down is a really good, good um, way to go about it. So really just one thing I like to touch on too is, you know, you produce cannabinoids naturally in your body. So you have what's called endogenous cannabinoids and then you have phytocannabinoids. So endogenous cannabinoids means that your body makes them naturally and plant derived cannabinoids you have to obviously consume to get. And the one that is the most famous and why CBD was kind of discovered. So the most famous endogenous cannabinoid is anandamide. And in Sanskrit, ananda means bliss. And this is the happiness hormone that you create. It's the hormone created during the runner's high. So um, it's a really interesting molecule. It makes you feel very happy. It's also uh, secre secreted when you have oxytocin. So like your love hormone, orgasm, bonding hormone, all of that. And what CBD does is it inhibits a molecule called Fa. And Fa is this molecule in your body that breaks down anandamide very quickly. So CBD allows anandamide to hang out in the body much longer. And this means that you can have improved mood. And this is why we think it's helping with things like depression, anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, and I will say, I think it's probably the thing that I noticed the most for me personally is how much better I can run. And I did not know about anandamide when I started taking CBD. So this was not like a, um, a placebo effect for me. And I'm not a runner. Like I honestly hate running, but now I've really come to love it. And I think that it's to do a lot with this CBD molecule. So the mood, you know, this is one thing that's being studied for huge is PTSD. There's a really fascinating study going on in Canada right now. Canada's kind of on the forefront with this research. And they have 2,400 veterans with PTSD. And those who've used cannabinoids had a statistically significant reduction in severe depressive episodes and suicidal tendencies. So that's been something that's really fascinating. It just, it's kind of like rewiring things, we think, and allowing things to communicate better. It also works with pain. And an interesting thing with pain is that we become addicted to it. So there's an addiction loop in the brain that goes on with pain. And so you can mentally like move yourself beyond pain. It's very hard to do, but a lot of it is because you're in this addiction loop with this pain response that's going on. So CBD, although we think it can help reduce the actual pain by reducing inflammation, it's really working on that addiction loop that you have going on with pain. And we'll study that more and I'm excited to see where those studies go. But this study um, done in California of 2,897 residents revealed that 97% of opioid users reported that they strongly agreed that cannabinoids reduce their opioid use. And Dr. Alex Capano, she's kind of on the forefront of this research. Um, she's one of the only women really studying CBD and she's pretty a fascinating resource. But she's actually said that CBD and cannabinoids in general are our greatest and safest weapon in reducing opioids and helping with the opioid crisis. So I will be very excited to see where that goes. Yeah. In states where we've had medical cannabis, there's been a 24.8% lower mean annual opioid overdose mortality rate. Um, there's also been a 14% reduction in alcohol and pharmaceutical sales in those states. Wow.
That's pretty good, huh? Yeah. Yeah, and this just talks, you know, it is safe to add to an opioid regimen, and there's really nothing else that we have available to us right now that is. So that's something that's very exciting to look at in the future. Um, and fibromyalgia. So autoimmune is something else that CBD is being looked at for dramatically. So I'm sure you, Christina, deal with a lot of people with fibromyalgia or autoimmune in your practice. Um, and this was a really interesting study. So if you guys want to go on a website called echoconnection.org, it's E-C-H-O connection.org. There's a tab there that says education and you can click there and there's over 25,000 peer reviewed research studies by condition. So you can look them up and, and, it's, and you, I mean, it's overwhelming. It is. It's overwhelming, but it's a really there's good resource. So much good information, but it is overwhelming because there's so mm -hmm. much. So but if you want to dive in, that's on something. Um, every single line on that site, when you when you put your mouse over it, that is a research study. So it kind of looks like it's just a list of things, but each one of those is actually a study. So yeah. It's, for anyone who wants to nerd out, this is the place to right. go. I always send no. my doctors here. You see me there. <laughs> yep. Um, <laughs> but this was a study that I stumbled upon while going through that. And they, and I had a doctor, you know, he stood up in one of my presentations and I had this slide up. And so Cymbalta, Savella, and Lyric are the three major drugs that we use for fibromyalgia at this point. And so in this study, they found that 8% of users found Cymbalta very effective, 10% found Savella and Lyrica, 10% also. 62% of users found cannabinoids very effective. That's a huge, staggering difference. Yeah. And the man who gave me a hard time, he was a doctor, he stood up and he goes, well, those are, that's pretty much the results that I got when I was in practice. And I just thought, if you are a doctor and only 10% of your patients are getting results, like you're not a very good doctor. If 10% of my patients got weight loss results, I would be a failure. Um, so I couldn't believe that he hadn't looked for something else. And he did become open to it after he saw this study. But yeah, 62% found cannabinoids very effective. Only 5% found that it did not help. Whereas with Savella, Cymbalta, and Lyrica, you know, 68% found that Savella didn't help. So it's really like a staggering change. And you can use... With fibromyalgia, you can use a topical as well. So CBD works on the skin because we have CB1 and CB2 receptors in the skin. Um, and that's a lot of why it can help with pain reduction. But navigating the wild west of CBD. So right now, 91% of products do not match their packaging and up to 70% of CBD products do not match their label. So this is where it gets very, very scary and dicey. So I'll give you an example of a certificate of analysis. Um, this is a product that is, it's a CBD arousal product. So there's a lot of things that are out there that are like, they're just using them because CBD is such a hot seller. So when you look at the certificate of analysis for this product, it's a 30 milliliter bottle. And when you break it down, you realize that they're charging $4.84 for a milligram of CBD. So our product, which is pharmaceutical grade, we only charge 10 cents a milligram. So you can see how much people are like getting incredibly ripped off. Um, and this is another one. So this is, I live in Hawaii. This is the most popular CBD that was sold at our health food store. It claimed to be a full spectrum product. But when you actually look at the certificate of analysis, you can see CBG, CBC, none detectable. So this means it's not really a full spectrum product. So even though they've put it on the label, it's not true. And they also say that there's 500 milligrams of CBD in this product, but when you actually go and work it out and look at what there is, there's only 75.3 milligrams of CBD in this product. So I did start, you know, I said from the beginning that I am brand specific and there is a reason why. Um, the reason that I work with Canaway now is because they have created the standard for testing. So they're the first company ever to, to create a CBD product. If not for them, there would not be the space. And although I thought I was going to get into it by myself, I'm very glad I didn't because they're really setting the standards. So they created the testing standards. Right now, they're one of only 14 companies worldwide that got the hemp certification. And what they have is a QR code on every bottle so you can see who planted it, you can see the certificate of analysis, and you can see every step that your CV has taken from soil to sale. So that's really huge. There's a lot of people out there who 
don't do that. To extract correctly, the equipment is three quarters of a million dollars for a subcritical CO2 extractor. So a lot of farms are not going to be able to afford that. So if you're seeing local products, I say beware. And I, I'm, I'm amiss to say that because it's a shame, but it's really kind of the truth at this point. So Canaway was the first product, or Medical Marijuana Inc., the company that we're a part of, was the first company to create the triple lab testing standards. Um, they were the first one to figure out how to measure how much CBD is actually in a product. And they are now the largest producers of hemp worldwide. So the industry, although you may think it's huge at this point, it's only at $2 billion a year right now. And by 2027, it's predicted to get to $57 billion. So it's supposed to an outperform the entire organic food industry within the next five years. That's a pretty staggering statistic. So a couple of things, if you're thinking about, you know, taking CBD, I've kind of gone over that. If you're thinking that you might want to do this as something to add in as a career option or um, a side income, there is definitely some room for that. We're in what's considered the green rush right now. You obviously have to be very careful about who you're partnering with and what you're selling because I just went through all of that. But one of the things to know, you know, that 84% um, found CBD to be very effective in reducing their clinical conditions. 42% of people substituted CBD completely and eliminated use of traditional medications. So there's a huge population out there who are looking for this product and they're looking for somebody to tell them this is the product you should be taking. So I would highly recommend if you're like of a health coach or you have um, an audience, you're a yoga instructor or you're a doctor, that you talk to Christina or myself about how to get involved with this company. We're the only one written on the PDR. So as a physician, it's really the only one that you should be working with at this point. So a little bit about the company I chose to work with. Canaway, it is a subsidiary of Medical Marijuana Inc., which is the first publicly traded cannabis company in the world. They've changed the laws in 11 different countries at this point. If you guys have a chance, you should check out the documentary Illegal. They're currently featured on Netflix. And what they were doing in the beginning was they were working at trade shows and they were not getting their product out quick enough because you really require social change for this movement. A lot of people hear cannabis and they're just confused and they're scared. So they chose Canaway as a direct sales company where most people can get in and, and retail it. Now there's a wholesale option for people who want to host it in their stores and things like that, and they can do that. Um, but there is a lot of opportunity for people who want to get involved with our team. We currently have the biggest team in the United States, and I work with some of the top doctors in the world on this project. So if you guys would like to be involved, I would love to chat with you individually. And this is lastly, I'll share this with you guys. This was a clip for a project that we did called the Warrior Project. So we took our product and we took it a step further. We sponsor people in who are going through periods of need. So suffering with cancer, epilepsy, um, anything like that. I work with a little boy with leukemia. His mom had to quit her job. And so as your customers or yourself are buying the CBD product, part of the proceeds are going back towards these people. And we're helping, so call it like a glorified GoFundMe that you get to get healthy in someone else's name. And this made the New York news, so I will share it. The community you. is rallying around a Long Island woman to help and support her through a tough battle with breast cancer. Fios One's Brittany Comac has the story from Mount Sinai. Doctors first diagnosed Donna Tishner with stage two breast cancer about five years ago. Since then, she's gone through chemo, radiation, a double mastectomy, and remission. But this year, doctors once again diagnosed her, this time with stage four breast cancer. It is now in my blood and attaching to my bones. The 52-year-old says doctors have given her four to five years for the disease to fully progress. But since her diagnosis, she started to use CBD oil to help with the immense pain she was in. That's what's brought dozens in the community of Saturday night. I'm so overwhelmed. I have no words to express my gratitude. Tishner and her friends didn't want to make any medical claims, but said that since she'd started using the CBD oil, a large tumor on her spine had actually disappeared. When I went for my last PET scan, the doctors couldn't find the tumor. I'm confident it's helping. 
However, she's recently run out of the oil, leaving her in excruciating pain, and her friends and family are hoping to fundraise $3,000 for her to be able to stock her with another year of it. She's had tremendous results on CBD. Part of the fundraiser will be to auction off several of Tishner's paintings, including a series she did specifically on breast cancer, which she hopes will raise awareness. On the outside, we may be smiling, but on the inside, it is very devastating to think, oh, I'm going to die. I believe that we're put on this planet to help each other and support each other. And when somebody is struggling and God forbid something that happens to me, I would hope that the community would come together and support each other. In Mount Sinai, Brittany Colmack, Bios One News. So there's a lot of potential to do some good with this plant and really help some people out. Um, and, you know, there's there's some really big claims being made. This is one that I love to share. It said the discovery of the endocannabinoid system is the single most important medical scientific discovery ever and will save more lives than the discovery and application of sterile surgical technique. That's a huge claim. And Dr. Titus, who we work with, has talked you know, about doing genetic profiling down the road where we can see which cannabinoids are gonna to respond to different diseases and things. So while there's a lot of room for growth in the industry and a lot of room for more studies to be done, and I'm excited to see where it goes, it's really a good product to be getting yourself on as long as it's a full spectrum, or I mean, sorry, a clean product. So um, if you guys are interested in talking to us about the business opportunity, becoming a retailer, you can reach out individually. Christina or myself can chat with you guys about that. But even just know as a customer, you're getting what's considered the gold standard of this product, and you're also helping those in need at the same time. So it's really beautiful. Yeah, and then lastly, we do hold the government patent to do all of the research. So Canaway is the company that really is considered, you know, if not for this company, there would be no CBD space. Everything that you're seeing on the shelves is a result of the research that we have been doing. So it's very exciting and it's a very beautiful company to be a part of. Hey, Chelsea, can you also just talk a tiny bit about um, the herbalist that works with um, Canaway and you know yeah that has created like these uh, AM and PM so it really helps with waking up and being alert in the morning but also helping get quality sleep because I think one of the biggest challenges that my clients have and my friends really is getting good sleep at night. Yeah this is the line that I take and Dr. Janelle Kim is the formulator of this and a lot of people will talk about the bioavailability of CBD and they've created what they call nanotechnology. And I'll tell you, the nanotechnology is not necessarily safe. There's been no safety data done on it whatsoever. And one company I particularly know of, I'll tell you the name of it because you shouldn't take it, it's Quicksilver. Um, and then there's another company that white labeled that product called Prime My Body. So what they did was they tweened a vitamin E. And when you tween something in the industry, you put it on the, the name and it, it means that it's really it says it's vitamin E, but it's not vitamin E. When you look at the distributor of that, it's actually antifreeze. So that's really scary. Um, so obviously, maybe it's like bioavailable antifreeze, but that's not great. But what we do know, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. It's, it's so cool. yummy. Yeah. So what Janelle Kim has found, and if you look back at ancient formula formulations, the Buddhas used to use uh, ginseng and hemp to help open the third eye. So Janelle Kim is a master herbologist, and she used her wisdom with that and created a bibong formula, which is a traditional Korean formula. Um, and she combined it with the CBD. So it does help the bioavailability. There's things like cassia root in here, which helps with uh, insulin resistance, which will help you get a better night's sleep, number one. There's also licorice root, which is a potent antiviral. There's a sublingual D3 in here as well, which will help you relax. Um, it's anti-cancer, preventative, wonderful. And there's the two different formulations here. So you have the AM, which is for being revived and awake. There's a little bit of CBD in that, roughly 10 milligrams. And then in the PM, you have 16.67 per serving. So that gives you a really nice REM sleep. And there's 500 milligrams in that whole entire bottle. It's an incredibly reasonable price point at $66. So one of my, if you're thinking about taking CBD and one of your main things is sleep, start with this product. Um, the Revive Pro is a much higher CBD content and really high herbal formulation. And I love this. It tastes really good. So CBD does not always taste the best, and it shouldn't. If you have a CBD that tastes really good, then they've done something bad to it. Yeah. So it does taste like, like if you like if you're gonna eat rabbit food, that's yeah. 
rabbit food. I actually kind of like it. Like I got used to it. One of my brand ambassadors says that it tastes like you're going to live forever. Um, (laughs) I'm going to, I'm going to mentally tell myself that. But yeah. First taste of it, I was like, oh, I'm eating grass right now. <laughs> yeah, you definitely eat but it's a lot just of only like a couple of it. times before you, it, it's like you don't really taste it anymore. It's kind of interesting. You do get used to it. And then you want to put it under your tongue and hold it for 60 to 90 seconds because you really want CBD to actually go into the bloodstream. That's actually why a vape of a CBD is a great option. And I was very on the fence about that when I started with this company. I thought, oh, I don't know about the vape. But there is an argument that all medications should be vaporized. So we vaporize vitamin B now um, and different things like that. And it's because it doesn't have to go into the, it doesn't have to pass the liver. And if anything passes the liver, it changes it. So the gum and then the vape are really good options. The gum is obviously a bit more socially acceptable. The vape, the issue that's coming about is people are putting bad things in it. So the vape we use is 100% pure CBD. Um, it's not going to cause popcorn lung. It's not got any of those nasty binders, fillers or anything. So that is a good option for people who are experiencing acute anxiety. Um, They can take that and it can bring them down right away, but that's a really good product to take. And the topical salve is amazing too. So it's a really low price point. It's about $38 at a wholesale cost, which everyone is welcome to get through, through us. And that has 50 milligrams of CBD, which is probably one of the lowest priced products that you're going to see on the market in terms of 50 milligram and it's the highest quality you're going to get and you can use that not only on areas of pain or eczema psoriasis things like that but you can use it on acupressure points to actually help um, relieve anxiety as well so those are some really good and that has a nice herbal formulation and we do have the pure line which i should speak about so the pure line is for anyone who gets drug tested It is actually approved by WADA, so the World Anti-Doping Federation, and we do have a few professional athletes who actually use this product. Um, One of them is Olympic gold medalist Amy Van Dyken. So she's subject to drug testing all the time, and she does use our products. And then we have a dog line. So animals that have, there's a lot of people out there using CBD for their animals and for good reason, Um, but you do need to be careful because dogs are highly allergic to CBD. I mean, sorry, THC. So you have to make sure you have a pure product. So we have these treats that are four milligrams of CBD. They're corn, wheat, soy, dairy, gluten-free. You can actually eat them if you want to. They're kind of yummy. One of our, (laughs) one of the leaders of our company was eating one the other day. And we have these hemp chews. So something I didn't think about before I got involved with this too, was how much your animals are chewing, dogs in particular, on these like plastic toys. And all of these microfibers are going into their stomach. And that's why we also partnered with a hemp company to help remove plastics from the ocean. Uh, Hempies is a 25-year-old company. They've been around for a really long time. They make some really cute things. And one of their missions is to remove plastics from the ocean through clothing. So hemp has the ability to do that. We are what's considered a carbon negative company at this time. So all of our bio waste we take and we make into building material or clothing, which is super cool. So there's a lot of potential for this plant to really change the world. And Canaway is on the forefront of that. Uh, we were featured. Everyone at the Oscars got some of our products in their bags as well. So I think it was Jack Nicholson said that Canaway changed his life. And um, yeah, it's just very cool to be involved with a company like that. And this is the website for Echo Connection. If you guys are interested, it's echoconnection.org. And that is where you can go nerd out on all of the different studies over there. Any questions, Christina? 